Okay, good morning. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us on this um, very exciting event that we are about to have. Um, my name is Carol Straw. I'm the Manager for Tourism and Services with Jamaica Promotions Corporation, JAMPRO. I will be reading the ground rules for this event, um, which um, I would want you to observe as we go along. The webinar is being recorded. All video and audio have been turned off for participants. If you have questions, please type in the question box below. Your question will be answered by one of our panelists live and responded to in the box. No verbal questions will be allowed. And as we go through this pandemic, folks, um, we recognize that there is a new opportunity. A new opportunity has come into focus for innovation, for actualization, and for, and for diversification and expansion. One such opportunity is the area of medical tourism, the sleeping giant for Jamaica. Jamaica is perfectly poised to take advantage of this trillion dollar industry and our erudite panel will delve into this shortly. I, we have an agenda which we're gonna um, just briefly indicate to you. And uh, then we will move into the introductions and uh, um, the presentation of projects. So at first we will, uh, we will have just a um, welcoming by myself. Then we will have the fireside chat moderated by Dan Edwards, um, our president of JAMPRO. We have the panelists, um, Dr. Jan Hoktrit, Dr. Guna Mupuri, and Dr. Ernest Madhu, and I will be going into their bio shortly, followed by a QA and and um, presentation of projects, and then a wrap up. So let me start with the moderator, Dan Edwards. Um, Dan Edwards is the president of Jamaica Promotions Corporation, JAMPRO, the National Investment and Export Promotion Agency for the Government of Jamaica. Possessing a wealth of knowledge and experience in international marketing and business development, Ms. Edwards is committed to developing and advancing Jamaica's business brand. Under her leadership, JAMPRO has facilitated approximately US $1.75 billion in investments, $1.29 US dollars, billion dollars in export sales and created over 51,000 jobs. She has led JAMPRO's transformational development to serve as a catalyst for wealth creation through increased customer focus and more effective marketing communications programs and has promoted a culture of innovation to facilitate and support the development of new industries in Jamaica, such as shared services, medical tourism, and cannabis. She has also been a strong advocate for the transformation of Jamaica's national business environment with new initiatives including the national business portal the national investment policy and the top 10 doing business ranking report miss edwards has also served as president and a board member of the caribbean association of investment promotion agencies kaipo prior to leading jampro she served as general manager and director of j red nephew uk limited where she successfully grew the UK company's turnover by 77% over 10 years. Ms. Edwards holds an MBA from New York's Pace University, a master's in international relations from the Institut d'études politiques de Paris, and is fluent in English, French, Spanish, and German. Welcome, President. We, we thank you for joining us this morning. And now on to our panelists. Our first panelist is Dr. Jan Hotrich. Dr. Jan Hotrich is a German board certified double specialist with over 20 years of experience. As a general and plastic surgeon, he specializes in aesthetic surgery, breast reconstruction, including modern microsurgical techniques, as well as hand and wrist surgery. His skills have assisted a broad range of patients from cancer survivors and deformed persons 
to aesthetic patients seeking to augment their beauty. After having the subdivisions of hand and wrist surgery and microsurgical breast reconstruction at a large teaching hospital in the Netherlands, he offers a full array of modern aesthetic and hand surgery here in Jamaica. He is one of the founding fathers of the Jamaican Society for Regenerative Medicine, JSRM, and as such, as a part of its steering committee and its advisor for pl plastic reconstructive and aesthetic surgery. Dr. Hoektrich has been involved in medical tourism since 2015 and is a proponent of the growth of this industry. He is a member of the DGPRAEC, the NBPC, the ASJ, the MAJ, and the JSRM. Welcome, Dr. Hoektrich. Thank you for joining us. And then we have Dr. Ernest Madhu. Dr. Madhu is the founder and chairman of the Heart Institute of the Caribbean and the Heart, the HIC Heart Hospital in Jamaica. He is the founder of Doctors on Call Services in West Africa, the managing partner of the IHS Group Incorporated in Nashville, Tennessee, and also the distinguished awardee from the American College of Cardiology. Professor Madhu is an internationally recognized authority on cardiovascular medicine and innovative healthcare systems and solutions, and holds the rank of Professor of Cardiovascular Medicine and Advanced Imaging Technologies. Professor Ernest Madhu has had a distinguished career in clinical medicine, global health, and business. He is a pioneer in the development of healthcare infrastructure in developing countries and is respected globally for his contributions to cardiovascular medicine and health system innovation. Professor Madhu is frequently invited to speak about health systems innovation on the global stage. He is a leading expert in leveraging technology to bridge the access gap in quality healthcare delivery and has used his expertise in leading innovative and transformational healthcare projects in the USA, Africa, and the Caribbean. Dr. Madhu is an established clinical investigator with more than 100 scientific publications in leading cardiology journals and has served on the academic faculty at leading universities, including UCLA and Vanderbilt University. He has also been involved in training more than 100 cardiologists. In 2015, Professor Madhu was elected to the Fellowship of International Academy of Cardiovascular Sciences, FIACS, an elite group that recognizes the absolute best minds in cardiovascular medicine around the world and allows for no more than 250 living cardiovascular scientists and opinion shapers in cardiovascular medicine at any time. Professor Madhu is a main TED speaker whose TED talk has been translated into 19 languages, seen and shared by more than 500,000 viewers. He has received the Distinguished Cardio Cardiologist Award, the highest award from the American College of Cardiology, and has been named among the 100 most influential people in healthcare and among the 30 most influential in public health. Dr. Madhu is a recipient of the Global Health Champion Award from the University of Pennsylvania. Dr. Madhu is the founder of the Heart Institute of the Caribbean and the Heart Institute of the Caribbean Heart Hospital and served as CEO of the Heart Institute of the Caribbean for more than 15 years. He's currently the chairman of the organization as well as IHS Holdings an asset management company with interest in the USA, Africa, and the Caribbean. Welcome, Dr. Madhu. And nice to have you with us. And of course, last but not least, our doctor and entrepreneur, Dr. Guna Mapuri. Dr. Guna Mapuri is a physician who has become an entrepreneur when he saw the need for affordable, effective, effective pharmaceuticals in Jamaica and set out to provide them through his company in this pharma, which he set up in 2003. Today, he is the CEO of the multinational Biopris group of companies, which owns a major stake in the Indus Pharma 
and has since branched into specific purpose-built real estate and industrial redevelopment, which takes abandoned infrastructure and creates special economic opportunity zone. A native of India, Dr. Mukpur migrated to Jamaica in 1992 at the age of 21 as an intern at the University Hospital of the West Indies. As a young medical practitioner, he observed the difficulties of an average Jamaican citizen's ability to afford prescription medications. The key driving factor for the transition was the cost of the prophylactic medication for stroke disorder, which has been the leading cause of deaths in Jamaica since 1999. His determination to reduce the cost of prescription medication turned him into an entrepreneur. Uh, under his able stewardship, Indus Pharma has become a force to be reckoned with in the field of branded generic pharmaceuticals. With more than 450 drug dossier registrations in Jamaica, Mapuri's quest to make medicines available and affordable has played a substantial role in providing several prescription drugs in 23 different therapeutic segments and many other over-the-counter generic pharmaceuticals in Jamaica. Indus Pharma is now a majority-owned subsidiary of the Biopris group of companies of which Dr. Mapuri is the CEO. Biopris has branched into several other industries, the major one being knowledge parks, where offshore services are provided by Jamaican nationals. Biopris is also developing projects of over 315 million US in a 65 acre campus, Grand Ridge Medical City in Anshore, Montego Bay, to provide space for local and foreign academic medicine and healthcare institutions to set up offshore campuses. The seamless growth objectives under the Grand Ridge Medical City development incorporated the development of a 300 bed specialty private hospital, enabling the Jamaican soil to open its door for medical and healthcare tourism. Dr. Mopuri is also known for his philanthropic, I'm sorry, his philanthropic work. Most famously, his company undertook an out of court advocacy to make a generic hypertension drug, amlopidine, available to Jamaicans by having its patent revoked in the best interest of the people of Jamaica. Pfizer had the patent and manufactured the drug. In 2020, he pledged $1 million to help in the COVID fight in Jamaica. In this pharma also donates pharmaceuticals to the inner cities of Jamaica through the Hope Clinic in Montego Bay. And since 2018, his company has provided 18 scholarships annually for students in the medical and pharmacy schools in Jamaica. He has also initiated knowledge camps for children in Jamaica, which exposes them to science. As a joint effort between Dr. Mopuri and the Indian High Commission in Jamaica, Dr. Mopuri is advocating for the whole viral inactivated vaccine against the COVID-19 to be offered to Jamaican citizens. Currently, he's at the ninth mile of 10 miles in his advocacy to bring COVID-19 vaccine from India so that Jamaica should receive the herd immunity within the next six months. Dr. Gunamapuri has been honored in Jamaica and in India, where in India he was conferred with the Pravasi Bharatiya Saman Award in India in 2019, the highest civilian award conferred to the Indian diaspora. It was given on the Indian Diaspora Day, and in 2019, Dr. Mapuri was one of those 30 members globally who received the award from the Honorable President of India. Mr. Ramnath Kovind. In his adopted country, Jamaica, he has been honored by the American Chamber of Commerce with the Corporate Social Responsibility Award in 2018 and with the Good Physician Award of the Medical Association of Jamaica in 2008. So folks, as you can see, we have a highly qualified panel of persons who will be discussing today's topic. And um, we thank you for joining us. And I will hand over to Ms. Dan Edwards now, who will take charge of this very exciting and interesting fireside chat. Over to you, Dan. Thanks, Carol. 
I'm really excited to be with you all this morning and to be with such an auspicious and such a high achieving panel. We really have three exciting medical practitioners with us this morning, exciting and unusual because they are all business people in their own right. So I think that's a rarity among the medical profession. So big respect to the three of you and thank you so much for joining us this morning. We want to talk about an aspect of tourism that Jamaicans don't think much about, but which is actually very successful in the world globally and also in the region. Of the top seven medical tourism destinations in the world, three of them are actually regional, Caribbean region, and I'm talking the wider Caribbean basin. I'm talking about Mexico, Costa Rica, and Panama. They are three of the top seven global leaders. So this is, medical tourism is not strange to the region, but globally it is valued at 439 billion US dollars with three to 4% of the world's population traveling for medical reasons. By 2025, this industry is expected to grow to 500 million travels or 10% of global tourism. So really the audience, and I'm really happy you joined us this morning because I think we really need to start to think in Jamaica how we tap into this really lucrative market. Post COVID, the IMF, even the IMF is projecting that healthcare in tourism is going to increase and become much more important. People are now really thinking about their health. COVID has raised everyone's health level awareness. And so what we want to talk about this morning with our illustrious panel is how can Jamaica take advantage of the medical tourism space? What are the advantages that you see for Jamaica going forward? And in the context of COVID and our management of this, um, because I don't want to call it the end because we don't know when the end will be, but it's really about how do we manage our recovery from COVID and what role do you see medical tourism playing? How do you think, panel, that we can um, leverage the opportunities? What, what opportunities do you see and how we can leverage those opportunities? I'd love to start with Dr. Hope Tritt. Um, do, can you give us your perspective, please? And then I'll move on to the others. And I, I had to unmute myself. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, yes. Um, now, as you correctly said, the COVID situation is has started and is ongoing. And um, as much as we're not completely aware of where this thing is going, we can say that there is um, a lot more awareness about uh, health situations. Um, now, one thing has uh, been getting increasingly clear that um, COVID within 2020 and the beginning of 21 has, um, has, been, has created a big hit for the industry of medical tourism. So there was a poll um, that um, um, people from the industry said it would probably take about two to three years for, um, for the industry to, to get back to where it was. Uh, now, I think it is a train that's uh, not going to be stopped. Uh, but for Jamaica, that actually means that the time that we have um, that we have lost because we did not um, we did not start running as other people were, uh, we kind of made that up. So uh, we have uh, we have now a better position than um, than one and a half years ago because um, we have not really lost so much because we are not so far ahead in in medical tourism as yet. So I think that um, now uh, we will have to go ahead and um, provide the services that are needed. And um, now the, to provide services, we have to look at those uh, countries that have, um, that have needs for it or patients that potentially come to Jamaica will be those that um, seek um, cheaper um, or more cost-effective treatments. They might uh, look for availability um, that uh, that treatments have uh, that we have here, okay, uh, but also the privacy. Uh, we have um, in Jamaica um, an established um, infrastructure in tourism, 
which I think we should utilize um, and um, try and kind of uh, get people into that um, existing infrastructure to treat them. Okay, so um, the the uh, medical fraternity will have to come together there and um, and provide some uh, some changes. We will have to um, yeah basically work together. Okay, great. I think that's a very strong message to the medical fraternity. So hopefully you're all listening this morning and you'll take inspiration from what Dr. Hoftrit has said. COVID has put us on pause and we can emerge from this stronger if we use this time to get our acts together and um, really strategize for how we can create a really strong medical tourism offering in Jamaica going forward. Uh, do you agree, Dr. Madhu? Um, good afternoon, uh, or good morning, where you are. Uh, thanks, uh, Dan, and thanks to Jamper for inviting me to participate in this uh, very exciting uh, meeting. And thanks for the work uh, Jamper has been doing to push uh, this Gender forward, I think is good for Jamaica. Yes, I absolutely agree. I think uh, COVID um, has um, kind of like um, exposed a lot of frictions in the healthcare ecosystem. And um, countries that will progress further after COVID will be those countries that uh, recognize the opportunities that have been exposed by the pandemic. And I think medical tourism is apt. And Jamaica is very well placed to take a uh, great advantage of the global demand for medical services. Uh, the healthcare infrastructure in Jamaica uh, will grow as medical tourism grows. Uh, Jamaica has an inbuilt audience that will uh, take advantage of medical tourism uh, products or medical services in Jamaica, uh, the Jamaican diaspora. Uh, will feel at home coming back to Jamaica to access services, and they will get those services at a cost that is more affordable than they will get in the Western countries where they live. Uh, they will get those services from physicians that are very well trained. And as we grow the infrastructure, they will get services that match what they will get in the Western world. But we also have another market that is inbuilt, and that is the uh, region. Uh, especially the English-speaking Caribbean, we have very small islands that uh, may not be able to develop some of the services that citizens will need. And the economy in these islands are not as robust as it will be in the United States. So it will be a lot more cost-effective for them to get those services in Jamaica. So uh, Jamaica has so many things going for it. And I think we can explore some of these as we go forward in the discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Madhu. So um, Dr. Mapuri, I know that you have some big plans for uh, medical tourism in Jamaica. Where do you see the opportunity for Jamaica? Why are you so confident in its future? And what are the areas of specialization that you think Jamaica can focus on to attract medical tourists? You're still on mute, Dr. Mapuri. Uh, uh, my apologies for muting myself. Uh, uh, let me wish everyone a plug Jam Pro, Government of Jamaica, the distinguished members on the panel, and also the participants in the, on, on this webinar. Once again, we're happy that we are still alive despite the fact what COVID has done to the world. No doubt it has caused a devastating effect on the ecosystem of human resources and the mankind. And of course, today's our topic is healthcare. It has crippled the very spine of the healthcare system all over the world. And we are no immune and we are no different from that. Coming to the point, today's point, medical tourism, which is truly a sleeping giant, 
It's a diamond in the rubble and a low hanging fruit in my view. As an entrepreneur, as a physician, as a member of the medical fraternity, I will say that this is a decade of holistic opportunity, untapped to date, ready ever since it has to be dated. If not today, it should have been from yesterday. There are risks associated with that, but there are calculated risks because it demands time, energy, as usual, like any other business. It is, of course, capital intensive, no shortcuts. We are here for a long haul. As we all know, that Rome was not built, built in a day. The medical tourism sector in Jamaica will take a significant amount of time to build, but patient space, and I say return on investment is going to be five to 10 years. Looking at it, for the question specifically, what Madam President asked me, I will say it's a very big canvas to paint. Medical tourism or healthcare tourism is not limited to one specialty, particularly post COVID era. And this time is a fantastic opportunity for Jamaica as the largest English speaking Caribbean nation. Whatever the names you call the three of the top 10 industries I and mean, countries that is that the Latin region, but there's nothing in the English speaking region. And we have all, every advantage, the weather, proximity to our feedstock nations and the political stability. And also the government of Jamaica physical policies, of course, uh, Jampro's, um, initiatives, you know, all these things are in our favor, not for one particular faculty or area of speciality. It's going to wide open the doors for everywhere in the field of healthcare, not just the patient care, not just the wellness. It's also going to open an opportunity for academic institutions and research facilities to be established in the, in the Caribbean, I'll say proudly, Jamaica is the best to come. because we have enough resources. What's in the medical field? Everything is available here. All you need to have the right oven, to put all the ingredients, start baking it. That's such a low hanging fruit. So it opens um, a very wide door for several opportunities beyond healthcare. We are talking, we can also talk about uh, Jamaican diaspora looking forward for their home to have assisted living facilities and linkages with tourism sector. We're going to complement the tourism product. And I'll say that medical tourism must become uh, a hybrid between the Minister of Health, Ministry of Health and, and Tourism Ministry. This, this is going to have several, it's going to trickle down vertically, not just the patient care, health care and medical fraternity is beyond this. It's going to encompass several other sectors within the country. That's a huge opportunity I'm seeing, I'm rare, I am seeing. Maybe I mean, I always say that I see many things that people do not see and I hear uh, several things that many people do not hear. Typically in our language is schizophrenia, but not. This is what an entrepreneur's talk. This is what I see. We're intuition driven. We go for innovation and we will deliver excellence. That's what is there. But one thing is very critical here is my medical fraternity. I always say that we are very much fragmented Unless we become cohesive, we work collectively towards this goal, this cannot be executed properly. And I'm saying to my medical fraternity, this is our industry, this is your area of expertise. You don't have to cage yourself to four walls. There's life and this world beyond our four walls of practicing medicine. We can create opportunities. We can take uh, we can take care of our citizens, not only in Jamaica, the entire CARICOM, like Dr. Madhu said, this is not Jamaican enterprise anymore, medical tourism. Jamaica is the right uh, hub for the entire CARICOM to open this opportunity of healthcare and medical tourism. So I'm going to tell my uh, fellow members of the fraternity that you will be creating a legacy project and you will become a legend, not just in the sector, but for the entire CARICOM. Wake up.
you wake up first and then let's wake up the sleeping giant it's an incredible opportunity way out there waiting for every one of us let's capitalize and let's exploit it in the right way thank thanks you thanks very much thanks very much dr mapure for those really stirring words i think i hope the medical fraternity is listening he's talking to you uh, so i think you've touched on some very interesting points there one is the question of specialization jampro did a study some time ago um, it's about five years ago now where we looked at um, what are the low hanging fruit for the medical tourism um, sector. And what the consultant felt was that radiology, um, uh, dentistry were two of the biggest areas. Now, Dr. Hoftrit is in plastic surgery. Uh, Dr. Madhu is in cardiac. So at, I'm interested to hear from your perspective where you see within your disciplines um, the, the opportunity for medical tourism. And also Dr. Madhu mentioned the question of the diaspora. Do you see this as a big play for the diaspora? Dr. Hoftree? Yes, the diaspora is, uh, is definitely very important. Now, first of all, the um, plastic or especially cosmetic surgery has always been uh, in the center of, of interest of medical tourism. So it's always above 40% of all people who do medical tourism do this to, to uh, have access to cosmetic surgery that is available and, and, and cheaper. Now, the, um, the uh, Jamaican diaspora, to me, is a bit of a, a, a catalyzer. So uh, now, in my, in my office, um, I can say I have about 40% uh, medical tourists, and about 95% of those are Jamaican diaspora. And um, those, um, to me, are the first people that get in touch with Jamaica, with the services in Jamaica, but they will bring people, okay? So I do see that people even get, um, they get accompanied by people that are not Jamaican, uh, that will get exposed to um, that product here in Jamaica. So um, that is something that is another uh, great advantage of Jamaica that we have a very, a diaspora that is still very close to to uh, their mother country, and that like to um, that like to come to Jamaica, and for us it's also an advantage that those people who are Jamaican diaspora they have a they have an already a backup system here. They very often have have families that makes it that makes it a lot more convenient for the provider of those services too. Thanks, thanks for that, Dr. Hoekstrid. Um, Dr. Madhu, would you say, uh, there, there are some interesting questions in the Q&A here, and one of the, the questions being asked is, um, what strategies would you uh, recommend to the industry, to the medical industry, um, to, as to how to develop this uh, medical tourism um, sector? Dr. Mapuri uh, spoke about the coming together and the need for, um, for the medical fraternity to come together so that they can move as one group and develop the sector as one sector in collaboration with government. So um, I'd be interested, Dr. Madhu, as you already have a medical tourism facility, um, one, the question of how much uh, diaspora clientele you're seeing, and two, the question of how you would, would advise your medical fraternity to get into the, um, this, this sector and benefit from it. Dr. Madhu? Okay, Dr. Madhu may not be um, able to come on at this moment. So um, let me turn to you then, Dr. Mopuri, and ask you the same question. Do you do you feel, how do you feel that we need to come together within the medical fraternity? You spoke of the medical fraternity needing to be more cohesive and more coherent. How do you feel that coming together would work and what strategies should we develop uh, to bring the public and private sector together around this goal? And I'll speak to Jampro's role in a minute. Sure, uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh... Um, I'm going to touch a couple of sensitive points here. I'm going to start with my fraternity. Currently, what we have, we operate on a 
like a boutique operations. Most of our members of the fraternity. Um, but medical tourism is not a boutique operation. It's an industry by itself. So first of all, I'll advise uh, the Medical uh, Council of Jamaica and the Medical Assurance of Jamaica must come together. We need to have a particular framework to operate under this medical tourism concept. That's number one. Number two, medical fraternity, traditionally we are not great businessmen. We are not investors of such kind of certain kind of magnitude, but we are we have decent living. We are comfortable. That's what I can say. But at this moment, what I can say is we need motivation. The medical fraternity is going to need motivation from the government of Jamaica. We have to be seen as a knowledge process outsourcing industry when you talk about medical tourism to bring, particularly this COVID has created such an excellent opportunity for Jamaica. It's, it's going, we can become a destination for elective procedures and surgeries because up in the North, the entire healthcare system, health insurance are broke. Their spines have been broken, they're devastated. What we have is we can offer affordable healthcare in Jamaica. So we are the best place for to offer those elective procedures and um, services at an affordable cost, number one. But at the same time, what's important is accreditation. Accreditation is also very important, which is all we need to have is certification by the US Joint Commission. All we need is one certification that will open the doors for the global markets, for the patients to fly in, so the international insurances can honor the services that are offered in Jamaica. That's something that we need to do. Uh, as a medical fraternity. Now, coming to uh, government of Jamaica and Jampers roles, we all we all know that there is a framework, there's an incentive plan for tourism industry, hotel industry, and business process outsourcing industry. Why don't we consider medical tourism under the same regimen, with considered as a knowledge process outsourcing industry, offer the same incentive plans to the doctors and the medical fraternity? it will be a motivation for them. Give them 10 years of tax incentive. Give them the benefit of importing equipment. Currently, the importation of equipment is limited to certain specialty items. In my view, you need to give the, the tax, I mean, the incentive program must be applied from cotton swab to the needle to the MRI machine. That's a kind of a, um, a broad spectrum coverage you need to give the medical fraternity. Otherwise, we are very comfortable. We are fine, but we need a motivation to create an opportunity for others. You know? Not, see, when you do all these things, it's going to give such a positive socioeconomic balance. You know? The impact is going to be so much on the social, socioeconomic fabric of our country. All of imbalance are going to be corrected going forward. What we're going to create is not for us. It's not for today. This is what you're creating for our future generations, you know? where our future generation can cherish, enjoy, the fruit of the labor, what are we going to do today? How, like how we are enjoying today the fruit of the labor of our ancestors from those days when we migrated from Africa and all other continents, you know? We have transformed, we have evolved. So this industry must evolve too, so we can pass on the better product to the next generation down the line. And uh, um, there are other opportunities I can also touch, like uh, cannabis industry, which is yet to evolve. It must evolve. A lot of framework has to work out. We are fighting giants. We have opportunity, but it will come one day. Rome was not built in a day, but we can bring stem cell therapy here, research here. Why Panama? I have, I have known several of us going to Panama for infertility issues. We can create infertile centers here, stem cell centers here, but not fragmented. We need to have a specified zone. I will advocate for Montecabe because we have almost 100 flights in and out of our airport. Within an hour to maximum four hours, we can reach any destination in the North America. That's where our feed stock is. We have rooms to offer. We have Airbnb villas to offer. So it has so many distinct advantages. It's not that I am against Kingston. Forgive me for that. I live, Kingston was my place. I never wanted to leave Kingston. But I'm talking about from Jamaica's perspective, how I can sell Jamaica as a hub in the curriculum for healthcare and medical tourism. So. These are things that uh, I would say and leave the opportunity for other members on the panel. Uh, before I go, my tax incentive program, what I'm asking, like how we have general market on the stock exchange. 
give the medical tourism 10 years when you start investing in it, give it 10 years of incentive program. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Mapuri. I'm hearing you. Um, and just to let the, the audience know that Jampro actually has a draft medical tourism policy. We actually have gone that far and we've had this on the cards for actually a couple of years. We are really trying now to get it back on the agenda and we will be consulting with you in some shape or form to get this back on the agenda. Dr. Madhu, I think you have joined us again. So I would be interested to hear your perspective as someone who has a medical facility here in terms of, um, okay, one of the questions that I see in the Q&A is from Dion Bunting is um, in terms of the legal and institutional framework, what do we need to do to make it more attractive to medical tourism and to building the medical tourism sector in Jamaica. I think Dr. Mupuri touched on a number of things. He spoke about incentives. And we know that the tax incentive um, regime has evolved and it has evolved not only because of the Jamaican situation, but because of the international situation, which we have to take into account in developing incentives. So um, yeah, I'd be interested in Dr. Madhu's perspective on the legal and institutional framework and how we improve that to make it more attractive. Yeah, th thank you, Diane. Um, and um, you know, thanks to the other panelists that have contributed so far to the discussion. Um, very important question, uh, institutional and legal framework uh, must align before you drive any process forward. And um, I think it will have to come with a paradigm shift. Uh, Jamaica has to make a conscious decision to accept what is a known fact. The known fact is that healthcare is big business. Healthcare is big social needs provider. Uh, healthcare has always been seen for centuries as a social service, but it can make healthcare a social service a law only if it is a service that is funded fully by the government. Uh, but even in the socialist societies around the world, all of healthcare is not funded by the government. Uh, the healthcare is expensive to provide. Um, it is also very high risk business. So there has to be some degree of de-risking you know, to make it attractive for entrepreneurs to get into the healthcare ecosystem. Uh, because uh, it's patient capital that has to be invested in healthcare. You will have to be comfortable with waiting 15 or 20 years to gain the fruits of your investment. Uh, it's not an investment you rush in and rush out. Uh, it is also an investment that is very knowledge intensive. You know, you need high intellectual capital to make that uh, service possible. Uh, Tourism as a generic product has developed in Jamaica over at least 50 years. You know, people have been coming to Jamaica to vacation. They've been coming to Jamaica to play as it were. So the industry is a lot more mature. The people that have experience in the hotel industry exist in Jamaica. Other countries look towards Jamaica to hire people who have experience in running hotels running food and beverages and so on. But I guarantee you that it wasn't so at the time the industry was nascent, developing. At the time the industry was developing, we had to look outside to bring people in to help grow the local talent. If we're going to develop medical tourism that will be competitive on the global stage, then it means that we'll have to make it possible for geographical migration of labor. We have to attract people who have what we need to grow our own infrastructure, our own systems, our own processes. The only people that can do that in a way that will make it attractive to others are people who have done it, who have experience, who have a lot of knowledge doing it. It is impossible to make it attractive with novices, but if we bring people who have done it and who know how to do it, then we have an opportunity 
to grow our own internal capacity. And in 25 years, we will be a net exporter of healthcare talent to the rest of the world. The talent that we have now is still not at the level that will be competitive with the rest of the world, but it could get there. The only way it can get there is that as a nation, we have to make a decision that this is an opportunity that we do not want to be left behind. So many entities have to come to play. This is not a Ministry of Health product per se. Ministry of Health can be a facilitator. Ministry of Labor has a crucial role to play to understand that to drive this and make somebody leave the United States to come to Jamaica, we have to bring people, we have to bring infrastructure, we have to bring services that match what they're looking for. Minister of Tourism has to come into play. The national leadership must admit that incentives will reduce the risk. And if you reduce the risk, you encourage investment. If you encourage investment, we are likely to develop products that will sell to the rest of the world. Okay, I think there, those are some great points, Dr. Madhu. I think patient capital is certainly one of the takeaways. We absolutely have to sensitize the, um, the financial services sector to the potential of this industry. That is certainly a role that Jampro can start to play. I hope some of them are on this call, but I know that also um, Dr. Mopuri has been extremely successful in harnessing the, um, the power of the, the um, junior stock exchange. And I think that that is certainly one of the ways we can start to expand and, and really looking at private equity firms. And the other thing is, um, pension funds who actually have a lot of money, which they are now going to be able to invest in, in broader areas of the economy. So I'm gonna take another couple of questions from, um, from the audience. Uh, there's a question from Farah Zargaran, who I know is from Virtu, Virtudes or Virtudes um, Cannabis, uh, hemp, hemp farm, I think you're a hemp farm. She wants to ask what, you see as the opportunity innovative medical cannabis farms with large properties to partner with healthcare professionals um, to assist in the development of the medical tourism industry. Maybe Dr. Hoke, do you want to try that one? Uh, let me try that one. Actually, that is something uh, that if you work in the industry and if you live in Jamaica, you, 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 you can't help but thinking about it. So uh, now the the um, ganja or the, especially the CBD uh, production in Jamaica is very interesting and um, there, as there are um, a lot of potential in um, yeah, having products that uh, can be very helpful in, in the yeah, aftercare, after surgery, it, if, it's, if it's topicals or, um, so that would be something um, very interesting. And I think that, um, uh, we would need, and this would be an opportunity to, um, yeah, have um, to have more science in that field uh, that we could bring to Jamaica. So uh, I think for the for the um, um, ganja industry, it is uh, absolutely essential to to cooperate with medical tourism. Now we have uh, an advantage here in terms of legislation that might be uh, well, it's not against the law. Okay, but we have to we have to now look at is that enough for people to really invest? Is just the fact that stem cell treatment is not against the law, therefore we can do it? Or uh, uh, the, the the mushroom, the um, hallucinogens that are not illegal here? We would probably have to work towards um, a legislation that is more in favor of these things that would really put Jamaica to the forefront because. Um, that is something that pe people would need to invest in those fields, because even if it's not against the law today, it might be against the law tomorrow. So that would be um, calling to the uh, makers of legislation to, um, to provide a, yeah, a better, a better uh, biosphere for that. 
point taken. I think that is really where the, the medical tourism policy comes in because the more we develop the policy responses, the more we, we have specific provision for these types of operations and, and, and these types of experimental treatments. I think one of the weaknesses of our system is we don't promote R&D enough. So I think um, that is one of the, the critical areas that we need to promote is R&D. So uh, Dr. Banbarit, speaking again to the audience, is asking um, what are the drivers that would bring the, um, the Caribbean health systems together? So what do you think would be the drivers of health tourism to tie the Eng English speaking Caribbean together? Um, Dr. Madhu, you want to take that one? Yes, yeah, sure. The, <laughs> the opportunity is right, right? Uh, but again, I say there has to be uh, the framework that will make it uh, possible for these things to happen. Um, I go back to the initial question was about the legal and institutional frameworks that are necessary. Let's look at the Caribbean region, the English speaking Caribbean. Uh, you have a lot of people from the region that go to North America in search of services that are not available in the region. Jamaica could easily capitalize and make those services available. But again, I go back to what we must do. What we must do is to make the environment, um, make the environment very enabling to allow patient capital to flow. Um, and I agree with you that pension funds and um, other institutional investors in Jamaica are opportunities that could bring money into the healthcare ecosystem. Uh, however, because this is still a growing uh, industry, these investors are also somewhat risk averse and many of them don't have the uh, long-term view of their investment. And there's real estate that will give very fast and quick returns. And so everybody will invest in real estate development, but to encourage investment in healthcare, I believe there are legislative things that can be done to protect investment. And I'm not talking about uh, regulating the flow of capital, but investors also want to have some certainty that their investment capital is not going to be at risk. People need to know that if I come in here to do this, I need to be able to bring in the labor force that I need to get it done. I need to be able to get my equipment in. I need to be able to hire the right staff. That is why it has to be something that needs to be done in a more comprehensive way. Uh, there is no reason people from Antigua should be going to Miami for services. Jamaica could be the destination. At the Heart Institute, we're seeing a lot of people coming in from Antigua, St. Lucia, uh, St. Kitts and Nevis, and so on. But these are people, this has developed organically. But imagine what will happen if there is a national thrust in marketing these services to the region. If they, uh, the same way our hotels are known across the region, if our healthcare services are known, uh, it will encourage more people from the region to come because many times they go to Miami at great expense and there are cultural issues that doesn't make it the most welcoming place for them. Jamaica is right for them. And we're seeing a lot of these patients, not enough, but we're seeing a growing number of patients coming from several other islands in the region to HIC for cardiac treatment. And I think that is an example of what can happen. Absolutely. I think you, you've hit on some very key points there. This is happening, starting to happen organically. And really, it's about creating the framework to make it more attractive and, um, and to make it happen. Um, one of the participants was asking, well, why do people bypass Jamaica and go to some of these other destinations? And it's really because 
they have seen the vision and the potential of this industry as an economic development industry. And they have harnessed it and created a, a, a product because the product is not just, and I think Dr. Mukuri made this point, it's not just health, it's health and tourism. And it has myriad spin-offs because it goes into labor, it goes into immigration, it goes into a number of different sectors that are impacted by this. And also by developing private medical facilities, we will also raise the level of the public medical facilities. And I think that that spillover also should not be overlooked, that the impact on our local health service will be tremendous. Because if we have I know, for instance, that, um, and I can talk about Dr. Madhu in this regard, because he gives back a huge amount in free cardiac services. I hope you don't mind my saying that. Um, <laughs> um, because he's able to do it because he has a viable, sustainable concern. And so he's able to give some service to people who are not able to pay. And I think that that is a model that we have not really understood sufficiently in Jamaica and we, which we need to embrace. So I think um, there, there is a huge opportunity for us to be much more proactive in this field. Um, I see other questions here about um, addressing the billing system and revenue drivers. Um, there's some really quite um, strong questions. One question here is about how can the diaspora help to promote um, medical tourism? I think um, Dr. Mopuri, you can speak about that because you're about to, um, well, Dr. Hochtritt has already said and Dr. Madhu that they're seeing diaspora patients come into their facilities. So how do you think, Dr. Mapuri, um, that the diaspora can help us to promote? I think it's really clear. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to make sure that when my other colleagues uh, are speaking at one end, I'm going to be talking about the other spectrum of the subject. Uh, I'm, a, I'm going to speak on the holistic approach. They are specific to the point. My holistic approach is diaspora's participation they can participate as a patient, come and enjoy the best services in Jamaica. That's being offered, that's going to be offered under medical tourism by our medical fraternity in Jamaica. The other one is they can come and invest into our own Jamaican soil as a seed funders, become part of this industry. When we do this, they can participate through the IPO. When, when these things are listed, they must be listed on the stock exchange. I think Dr. Mapuri is, is frozen. Um, so maybe we can move on to Dr. Hochtrit. Um, how do you feel that we are we can um, leverage our relationship with the diaspora more to, to build the market for medical tourism in Jamaica? Well, um, one of the points we already addressed is, is basically the diaspora as patients opening up the market in the countries they, they chose to live. Um, another um, possible opportunity for, for Jamaicans in the diaspora would be actually um, being part of a network or a framework of professionals um, that are um, based in the countries that uh, basically um, send us patients. Okay, so uh, let me just give an example. Um, if if a person comes to me for, let me just say, for a liposuction, okay, it's, an, it's a, a small procedure, but um, in order for, uh, for the patient to have a good result, you will need aftercare. Now, of course, the, uh, the idea of, of medical tourism is not that you travel to a destination, you stay there until the treatment is fully um, is, is, uh, completed. You will have to go and get some of that treatment in the place that you live. And uh, now I think there, that is a challenge and by that is an opportunity for uh, the professional in the diaspora in that country that could actually provide uh, a network of people who do aftercare 
um, basically, or even doctors, physiotherapists, nurses, all those people that Jamaica produces and sends out, uh, we could in that way kind of use the brain drain that we have here in Jamaica to make that our asset in the countries um, where people come from for treatment. So I would love to see uh, an involvement of the, the Jamaican diaspora, the professional diaspora in Canada, the US, UK, or anywhere um, to really help uh, the situation here in Jamaica just by supporting it. Great, I, I fully agree. I think um, the diaspora can play a huge role, not only because we have so many medical practitioners, nurses, doctors, specialists in the diaspora, but also it's, it's really word of mouth that builds this, this kind of confidence in, you know, most of us find a medical doctor through a friend. You know, most of us are not really looking online to say, okay, can I find a specialist in X field? We're hearing about it from a friend. So the referral is a huge opportunity for us. Um, I think some, some people are asking here and a very valid question about accreditation. So Joint, joint um, JCI, Joint Commission International is the most popular accreditation which is one of the, the ways that you actually um, achieve international recognition in this field. And I think that that accreditation is extremely expensive, but I know that Dr. Mapuri, you intend to go after that accreditation when you build your own project. So can you tell us what role you see accreditation, how important you see accreditation being in, in this field? <clears throat> Um, Madam President, um, for you to call and promote yourself as medical tourism industry, uh, we're not looking at nickels and dimes as ought to generate. For you to have that kind of an inflow, FDI or revenues to come into the country, the critical part is accreditation and the low the best and the single accreditation body I depend on is US joint commission certification there's no nothing there's, there's nothing second to that it's the one and only thing that you must get it done but it comes with a significant cost for example now you cannot put any and what hospital you want to build for you to build a joint commission certified hospital the minimum requirement is 1000 square foot of space per patient as simple as in a bpo industry per seat the international standards are 60 square foot, but on the medical tourism side to get US Joint Commission certification so that major health insurance providers can pay their patients on the, at the near shore destination, which is Jamaica. You need to get this certification, but that certification of patient bed space, you're talking about thousand square foot. Can you believe how much it's going to cost you to build a thousand square foot bed space, which includes all the equipment and everything. I compare that to building a and finest resort in Montego Bay, where per key, the investment is about a quarter million US dollars. If you're looking at a 300 bed hospital, you're looking at 90 million US dollars to be invested upfront. So the, the critical component for that kind of investment is accreditation. When you have accreditation, then only the revenues will flow. Then there will be a question, what's the benefit to the Jamaican population? Of course, Jamaican people don't have to get a air ambulance. They don't have to fly into the United States. They can get the service right at their doorstep. You're bringing the first world services to their doorstep. That's a benefit to the Jamaican people. There are many people who do not have visas, who do not have any access. And how it will benefit, that's where a lot of people will know, the churches will come into play, the, the, several groups will come into play. We can create a fund for those needy Jamaicans also, where cost can be subsidized further. This is how we create. That's where accreditation is very important. We need only one on one, only accreditation, that's USJCC. I don't need more than that. Agreed, Dr. Mapuri. If one looks in the region, Costa Rica has three JCI accredited hospitals. Um, I think uh, Mexico has eight. So there are reasons why they go through that very expensive accreditation process. And that is because 
if you want to be recognized in this industry, as Dr. Mopuri says, this is not um, for the faint-hearted or for, for the, the shy to invest. This, this does cost a lot of money, but the reward is what is interesting on the other side. So we don't have a whole lot of time left. So what I wanted to do now if the audience will indulge, is to um, present a couple of projects, just very briefly, just to give you an overview of what is going on in the industry. But before I do that, I did want to make one other comment. I'll, I'll give you in a minute, Dr. Mapuri. Um, I just wanted to respond to one um, comment here in, in the Q&A, which is asking, is there a commitment from the government and what is the timeline to bring framework legislation to parliament? Um, the commitment from the government, I would say, is kind of in the making. I would say that JAMPRO is committed. Um, we have gone through a long consultation process, which um, is now ooh, probably four years old, um, between Ministry of Health, um, Ministry of Labor, all the stakeholders, Ministry of Tourism, Tourist Board. There were a lot of stakeholders involved in the consultation. Um, and some private sector representatives as well. So it was a public private consultation. We have got the policy in a draft form and it is making the rounds. You know that in government, you have to take the time to get comments from various ministries, etc. So we are in the process and um, I can't give a, a specific timetable as to when this process will be through, but we really hope that we will be able to have something in the public domain before the end of the year. So we will see, and that's not a guarantee. Please do not quote me in the press as saying this will happen at the end of the year, because it's really just um, a time frame that, that is aspirational for us. But we are committed to this process and we will continue to make it happen. Dr. Mupuri, you wanted to make another comment? Uh, sure, Madam President. Uh, uh, um, I had two, but you already answered the, the most important one, the framework and the draft document. Where are we in terms of the timelines? Thank you very much for addressing it. The next one, what I want to tell our diaspora, plus the private sector, plus my medical fraternity. I remember always, fortune favors the brain. You cannot be too timid. There is some amount of risk you need to take. And I can tell you very boldly that I took the risk. I'm in an advanced stage. And I can tell you our Jamaican finance sector, the banks, capital markets are very much in favor of this investment. They already gave me $1.125 billion already to invest into these projects. And they are well at an advanced stage. As we keep moving our targets, money will flow. That's what I'm telling the public. Talk to your bankers, talk to your talk to cap markets, become part of those funds where you can become part of this bigger initiative, relatively risk free. You don't have to take the risk. Go through your bankers, talk to your is the best destination, very innocent friendly destination. If I can do it, which I can made, I made this as my home for 30 years, and I can tell you, if I can do it, you can do it. Wonderful Jamaica and the policy. <laughs> Very inspiring, Doc. I mean, I think that people also, I think one of the things we have to change in business practices in Jamaica is that we do business with our friend over a drink. It does not mean we have researched the opportunity properly and we have a properly um, research and analyze business plan. And, and that's where I think a lot of our businesses don't get into new areas because they don't want to spend the money on researching upfront. Um, it would be, and I think, I think that is one of the things that Dr. Mopuri has successfully done. He has business plans and he has clear um, timelines and clear, um, what shall I say, a clear strategy as to how the business is going to evolve and how it's going to grow. I'm quite sure that Dr. Madhu did the same thing in developing HIV and Dr. Hofstreit. I am kind of making an assumption if you gentlemen want to comment very briefly before I move on to doing a presentation on the projects, Dr. Madhu. Yeah, sure. You know, thanks. I totally agree, you know, that um, we have to look at um, 
um, healthcare in a little bit of a different way. One point I just want to emphasize that I think uh, limitation in certain places is to see healthcare as just doctors, you know, because the tendency is to say, my doctor is a very good doctor, so it means we have good healthcare. Uh, that is not necessarily so. Uh, your very good doctor is limited by the infrastructure, he's limited by the system, and he's limited by the support personnel. We have to look at healthcare as a system. We have to look at healthcare as a dynamic, moving, breathing object. It changes as, as healthcare innovations come into play. We have to take advantage of those healthcare innovations. There are certain things we should be taking advantage of because of technological advances. Um, we should leapfrog certain things. We don't have to recreate the things that were done in 1960 because we know better today. And I think if we begin to look at healthcare in a systematic way and looking at healthcare systems, looking at healthcare infrastructure, rather than looking at doctors, then we will have a better chance of growing healthcare. You know, to develop medical tourism, we have to develop all the support personnel that make healthcare work. We have to look at the medical engineering, you know, biomedical services, biomedical engineering services. Your equipment must be maintained. We have to look at, uh, you know, critical technological staff, you know, whether it's cardiovascular technologies or other technologies that support other specialists in delivering the care. And don't forget the nurses. You know, we have looked at nurses as in a generic sense in Jamaica. To develop health tourism or medical tourism, we have to begin to specialize our nurses, begin to sub-specialize our nurses. We have to be talking about ICU nurses, not ICU nurses alone. We should be talking about cardiovascular nurses. We should be talking about you know, specialized nursing skills. Those specialized skills acquisitions are very critical in developing medical tourism. And the last point I'm gonna make is related to the accreditation. Now, uh, the accreditation. There, um, seem to have lost Dr. Madhu. Um, has he been kicked off? Dr. Madhu, you're gone on mute. Okay, maybe we can turn to Dr. Hoektrick. Go ahead. Um, maybe you want to make some, some last points before we um, do a quick presentation of some projects. Yes, I think uh, one of the points that I would really love to make is um, that uh, in order to be able to, um, to wake up the sleeping giant, uh, the medical fraternity has to really look at um, providing the necessary framework that starts with simple things like um, creating a specialist regis registration. So we in Jamaica, we have a doctor's registration, but, but not a specialist registration. And um, we have to be careful that if we provide services that um, we make sure that those people um, who provide those services are those people that are trained in their specialty. So that you don't have, if I, for example, was to start doing brain surgery, it probably wouldn't go well. Yeah, uh, you know, if that was a field that was very financially very attractive, um, I might feel tempted to do that and I'm allowed to do that here in Jamaica. Now, uh, the only problem is if I do something wrong and I get sued. But I think one of the things that we have to, uh, we have to provide is that, um, that, we, that we have to have a specialist registr registration that uh, we can make sure that those people who treat other people, especially foreigners, uh, not that it's more important than Jamaican, but just because it's a reputation thing that we make sure that those people are uh, qualified to do so. Okay, so uh, now we, if, if, if there is a number of, of incidents that happen in Jamaica because uh, people that were not qualified did surgery, then it's the reputation of the whole brand Jamaica that is really in jeopardy. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's the reputation and image is very critical in this business. 
like in any tourism business. Um, so thanks to those who final uh, that I just uh, got cut off is just be a minute. You know, with respect to accreditation, you know, I'm going to be asking for national realignment in recognizing that we are playing in a global space, yeah. right? And that comes with all players being on the same page at the same time. Absolutely, JCI accreditation is the gold standard that the rest of the world is looking at. Yeah. The problem is that our local accreditation process may not quite align with the JCI accreditation process. It is cost prohibitive to be, it's, it's almost like code switching. You know, you build your facility using JCI accreditation standards and local authorities want you to switch things around for a different reason. If we do not align those processes with international mm -hmm. standards, we will not get international accreditation. And if we do not get international accreditation, patients will not come in droves. People do their research. And one of the first questions people ask is, what is your accreditation? And the one everybody knows is JCI. And I am a strong believer in JCI accreditation because I know it is very programmatic, is well thought out, the things that you are required to have with JCI accreditation, they are known to improve outcomes. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of research that have been done to support that. So that is where I think we should be going. We must nationally align with international best practices and international standards. And I believe that if we do that, we will be very successful in positioning Jamaica as the ideal place for medical tourists to come. Great, great point at which um, to, to switch over, Dr. Madhu. Thank you very much for that. So I'm going to thank all the participants uh, right now um, because I'm going to exit for a minute so that Carol can make a presentation of three projects which we think really um, we want to bring to the attention of, of the, the audience that we have here today because I think you need to get the feeling that there are things happening in the space and there are things happening in the space. We have three powerful practitioners here with us this morning and I've really enjoyed the discussion with the three of you. I think your contributions have been fantastic and so on point. And this is not a conversation that is ending here at all. This is definitely just the, the um, continuation in Jampro's commitment to this space. So I'm gonna turn back over to Carol now, and Carol is gonna do a presentation very short of um, three projects which we have selected, which we think are very exciting in the space. Carol? Thank you, President. Um, we will talk about that in a minute, but just before, just before um, we, we bring up the projects, I, um, there was a, a question in the chat about the psilocybin mushroom, um, and uh, um, they wanted to know about the future of it in Jamaica. Would the doctors care to give a brief comment on that before we start the presentation? Just like two, two minutes. Um, Dr. Hoktrit, would you like to go ahead with that? Um, yeah, I, I must say, though, that my personal experience with, with these mushrooms is uh, less than limited. But um, as, a, as a product in healthcare, I think it is very interesting. And it, it seems to offer a lot of solutions in, um, in, yeah, mental, in, in the treatment of mental disorders, uh, which I think is an, is an opportunity we shouldn't let pass. So um, I see that especially in that field, there is going to be uh, a lot of development in medical tourism, but also in, in, the, in, the, in the regular tourism wellness um, um, industry. So um, I think, yes, it will play a part. But okay. again, um, it, just the fact that it's not against the law here in Jamaica might not be enough for investors to really do something. So, so again, we need to have a legislative framework to be to enable this part of the industry. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hope. Dr. Mupuri, do you have any comments on that? 
I have no comments on that. Exactly. Okay, no trouble. Dr. Madhu, do you have any comments on that? Unfortunately not. I don't know enough okay. about it to comment. <laughs> not a problem. All right. Um, we have three projects that we want to highlight. Thank you, doctors, for your comments. Um, we're just going to move into um, the section where we highlight um, the projects that are available. Um, and this is by no means um, um, the entire list, but just one or two opportunities that we wanted to highlight. The first one is um, Iri by the Sea, um, which is really a project focused on um, retired or semi-retired persons in the age group of 55 to 75 years old. And they are targeting post-pandemic baby boomers um, with disposable income who crave getting away from the stress of 2020. <laughs> and we know what that is like to beautiful spaces in faraway places like Jamaica. So the project is intended to deliver a one-of-a-kind um, all-inclusive destination niche. Um, it, you know, it's a community that's themed around nature, arts, wellness, and adventure and that would include a medical spa to provide the latest wellness therapies with the proposed use of traditional medicine. It will be built in two phases. The first phase will consist of a 12 hotel-like apartment unit um, with um, attractive jungle-themed amenities designed to offer one or two week retreats to attract and market um, the second phase, which um, would follow, um, the idea being that you try before you buy. The phase, the second phase would include uh, 40 homes and some additional amenities. Services um, would be included and staff like a resort would be required. And the campus would be an all-inclusive campus. So they're looking at Portland and they're also looking, they're, while they're open to other investors, um, Portland seems to offer that kind of atmosphere that they're looking at and they are seeking to identify investors who would come in and assist in financing the project and where possible also provide land. So that's one project that um, the audience can think about. The second project is the WA Rehab Facility. And this one is an exceptional and effective um, addi addiction rehab facility designed to deliver again, a kind of resort-like escape with extremely sophisticated clinical operations. So the project proposes to have individualized villas to ensure personalized and private care, personalized and private care and treatment. And will be the design will be based off the Japanese Ryokan luxury spa setting. The project is comprised of a state-of-the-art training facility with fully professionally equipped gym and physiotherapy center with a whirlpool bath, bath and Turkish and Swedish sauna room. It will also have an outdoor hot spring rock pool spa and Blue Mountain Coffee hot tub spa, along with a Japanese koi pond and meditation garden. So the whole idea here is to have this one in a confidential setting because they are targeting um, you know, high-end celebrities and so forth who may have an issue um, that requires rehabilitation. And so the setting would be confidential with the highest standards of privacy located high above Kingston in the Blue Mountains at Hardware Gap and, and surrounded by the Hollywell National Park, which is a location in um, our Blue Mountains. The Property is owned by the project owners, but they are seeking investors to come in and take equity in the project. And the last project that I just wanted to mention, we, we alluded to it earlier. And this is a project that is owned by one of our panelists, um, Dr. Mapuri, the Grand Ridge Medical City, which is proposed as a 65 acre special economic zone development and it is owned by the Ridge Special Economic Zone Holding Limited. A Jamaican, it is a Jamaican incorporation, which is an independent subsidiary of the parent company Biopris Group. 
The anchor component is the medical city concept, which other supplementary components um, join the anchor in establishing a fulsome, futuristic, and a viable, comprehensive development. The medical tourism cluster, which is whole, which is the focus of, of, of this medical city, um, would feature um, 300 beds um, in a proposed US Joint Commission International Certified Hospital, a College of Medicine Research and Health Professions, and a proposed 120 room assisted living facility. Grand Ridge features um, commercial spaces for offices, banks, retail units, including cafes and restaurants, domestic logistics and um, distribution cluster, um, commercial warehousing and distribution centers, business process outsourcing clusters, residential clusters, and villas and apartments to suit the needs of variable economic strata of working class and expatriates um, inclusive of affordable college student living. So partnership opportunities exist for this project, um, um, particularly with health related service organizations, as well as public and private participation. So if you're interested, let us know, give us a call um, at JamPro. Um, you can reach us at um, the emails there on your screen. Um, my team, Carol Straw, Karen Dixon, and General Ferguson. We would be happy to facilitate your interest. I also noted in the, in the chat that there are one or two persons there who have other opportunities that they would like us to look at. We can certainly take that offline and look at it. Um, send us the information by email, and then we can take it by there, from, from there. And just to wrap up, um, let me say thank you to President Edwards and to the panel um, for taking time to have this very important um, discussion. Um, I think some of the key points that have, have come across very strongly is the fact that um, the pandemic presents a renewed opportunity for Jamaica to take advantage of the medical tourism opportunity. And, and that is an industry that our local doctors and international doctors can coalesce around to form a very viable industry. Jamaica is just strategically located and offers a very friendly um, investment environment. We know that also from the discussions, it is, there is a need to address some of the ecosystem issues um, that have um, been mentioned that relates to legislative reform and, and to some extent infrastructural reform. And also there is a need to, um, to make better use of patient capital and to sensitize the financial sector around the opportunities on this and creating a, an enabling environment to, um, to make patient capital flow. So um, this, uh, we will certainly take a lot of these suggestions that have been made in the chat um, to come on board. Those of you who um, have not had your questions answered, we will endeavor to answer them um, in the course of the coming week. And we also want to encourage you, if you want to see a recording of this session, to visit JamPro TV on YouTube. And all registrants will be sent a direct link to your emails um, with this session and the information provided therein. Again, thanks again to our panelists, Dr. Guna Mapure, Dr. Jan Hoektrit, Dr. Ernest Madhu, and our president, um, Mrs. Dan, Miss Dan Edwards, I almost called her Dr. Dan Edwards. Um, thank you so much for a very stimulating discussion. And um, we look forward to good things ahead for medical tourism. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye, all. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you, everyone.